<clears throat> Hi everyone, this is Ronnie from the Fruit Festival, from my YouTube channel and everything else. And I'm really delighted to be joined with a couple of friends here today for a very special interview. And um, I don't know if you guys want to introduce yourself a little bit and say something sure. about yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brittany. And I'm Connor. Um, and yeah. Well, we're really excited to be coming to the Fruit Festival this year, Ronnie. So brilliant. this feels like really exciting to get the chance to talk here with you. Yeah, yeah it'll be our first year. And I'm really excited to do some acro classes and present on some other topics. But yeah, looking forward to it big time. Yeah. And I was thinking, Connor, that I've, I've thought about this a couple of times, that when I'm at the festival, when, I, when we're all in that room, uh, and when we're there, that you're probably the person I've known the longest within mm, that room. Wow. Apart from any family members that I've got that might be there or like <laughs> right. know, friends. Uh, but we go back about four or five years, uh, well, yeah. probably five years to the, and we kind of got into this about the same time with that, that that would be fair to say, <laughs> into yeah. kind of raw veganism and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. At the Woodstock Fruit Festival, what was your opinion? Did that kind of change your life when you met me, or just the festival itself, or what? <laughs> yeah, what, I mean, what? it was definitely in that order. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, and I was just I was just reminiscing that I think we started growing our beards big at around the same time. So I think at the next festival, we had two we had big beards and our camaraderie and some great pictures. Uh, sure, yeah. some interesting evidence of our relationship so yeah. yeah no the Woodstock Fruit Festival was amazing and meeting you there was like awesome like we just hit it off right in the beginning and it's like really cool to be where we are now sure, and sure, I'm sure. going to your festival and have That's the opportunity so cool. to to teach there and it's just it's awesome yeah. what, been really pivotal what always strikes me is that I never met you guys at that festival because I well, was there, there the first but I do remember, Ronnie, I remember you playing guitar and singing like around at the talent show and then around the fire, but I never met you, Connor. Yeah, it's really weird that I never met you. Yeah. Really? So yeah. you were there, you were there the, the second year, Brittany? Yeah, the first year at Camp Walden, oh, when yeah, the yeah. fires were down by the water. Yeah, we were, yeah, so I was there, you were there. I was there? Um, there. Brittany was supposedly there. I was there. There's people. <laughs> well, the, uh, the there was the year that you weren't there. Yeah, there was the year you weren't there. Connor. Connor. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Connor. Yeah. There's the year that you weren't there, and I was yeah. there, and um, and Brittany uh, spoke to me at one point. She said, "Are you um, you you're Connor's friend, aren't you?" I think I think you said something like that. And we she was like. You're Connor's friend, aren't you? And I was like, yeah. But I was being very, I was being coy because I knew I'd spoke to you a little bit about the fact that you were messaging Brittany. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I was, I was thinking like, I didn't know what's the rules here. I shouldn't say anything. Like I should, I should act like. You, You're like, like maybe. <laughs> <laughs> whereas, whereas I think you'd sent me a message that was like, because I was messaging you, what are you up to? What's happening? And you would send me messages like, "Oh, I'm, I'm in love with Brittany Taylor. I'm totally in love with." Her. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was, so, so then Brittany's saying that, Do you, "You're a friend of Connor." I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we. It was so, totally something, different. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that day? We were down by the massage tent. I was missing you a lot. Like, I wanted to like talk to you. We had just been like, "Hey, I'm totally in love with you." And you weren't at the festival. Yeah. And then I was like, I saw Ronnie, and I was like, Ronnie's cool, and maybe we can like talk about Connor a little. And he was just like, Yeah, like totally chill. <laughs> that is no awesome. Idea. You I played it well, Ronnie. Well played. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was always like, I should have been a bit more bold. I should have just been like, Yeah, totally, Connor totally loves you. I just thought I'd tell you that. <laughs> 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 that He's that telling everyone. everyone so. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. Right. Yeah, and um, since uh, from that point, uh, uh, you went to Thailand, and I kind of followed you out to Thailand. After, 
like you went on a bit of a journey mm. where you kind of traveled through Southeast Asia and now you run an event in that area as well mm-hmm. um, and you which you're both co-running as well so what what's the appeal of that area for you and, uh, and you put on events there yeah um so specifically Chiang Mai Thailand was one of the first places in Southeast Asia that I really felt like I found community and yeah. the group of people that was there, including yourself, I felt like so connected with and had such an awesome time living a completely different life than I had just like the year prior. You know, everything was there. There was just like limitless possibilities and connection and like love and tons of good fruit and warm weather. And so I went home back to the U.S with all of that in my mind, I was like, I just want to go back there and I want to do that again. <laughs> so my main idea was not so much to like establish a fruit festival as it was like, I want to have that experience again with people I like. So I just created this festival, Fruit Winter Festival, and had about 35 people show up the first year. And I was like, whoa, people are actually <laughs> <laughs> And since then, Brittany and I met up and we started doing the festival together and it's grown a lot. and. I think there's a lot more to say about about the about Chiang Mai itself, but that was my original call uh, sure. to it. Yeah, sure. I mean it's a it's it's so cool because it's a hub for sure. I think for people who are interested in fruit based diet or healthy living, I mean there's digital nomads that go there, and Ch- Chiang Mai itself is such a cool space. Like the feel of the city to me feels like community and family yeah. and playfulness and connection and peace like there's a million buddhist temples in there and it's like the feeling all around you is like love and acceptance and peace Mm. yeah yeah yeah, i think someone was saying to me is that not if you go to like best places for digital nomads to live the chiang mai is like the number one (laughs) on the top of the list or something yeah yeah there's some list out there yeah makes sense super affordable too Mm -hmm. So, um, in terms of your backstory of how you started on this journey, um, I'd like to hear from both of you, kind of what, I guess you've got a totally different, totally different things led you towards this kind of path and this lifestyle. So a little bit from both of you about what, what was the turning point for you that made you, you know, go to the Woodstock Festival and make yeah. changes in your life? And do you want to start? Sure. Yeah. Um, I was just, I think for me, the turning point was feeling really sick and unhealthy in my body. Right. Like, but I was an athlete growing up. And so I was like really active and I paid attention to what I put into my body and I felt relatively healthy, but I also think I was just really sensitive. So I Mm -hmm. kept getting sick and like had mono and pneumonia and the stomach and intestinal flu and I had migraines all the time and nothing I put in my body felt good. Like I just always right. felt, I felt like digesting food always felt uncomfortable. That was just right. like what it felt like when you digested food. And I just remember saying one day, like, I'll do anything. I'll literally do anything. I just want to know what works. And so I got a health coach and then after charting my food for like two weeks, it became clear that just eating like a simple, plant-based diet wasn't working for me and like grains and legumes specifically weren't working and my health coach happened to have experience with raw food and she was I was like I don't know what else I can do and she's like well you could go raw and I was like what the heck is that (laughs) and I found Megan Elizabeth's videos on YouTube that night and overnight I just like started adopting a fruit-based diet and probably the next week I found out about the Woodstock Fruit Festival and I just (laughs) signed up which made no sense but I was just like, I'm going to that. And that was like four, four months before the festival. And it was like, okay, I'm doing it. Yeah. It's amazing. That was it. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, we actually, we found out that we, we probably started at just about the same time, although we didn't know each other. Sure. Um, and my, my back history was that I was with uh, the same partner since I was 16 years old and when I was 28. We separated, and it was her choice, and it was just like incredibly difficult for me. Yeah. And I had been kind of coping with um, difficulties throughout the last decade with alcohol. So I was drinking a lot of alcohol every single day. I was smoking cigarettes, I was drinking a lot of caffeine. I was doing some other 
pretty strong drugs from time to time. And that, that was just my life and working a lot, like 60 hours to 80 hours a week. And <clears throat> when that relationship changed, my whole life kind of became an opportunity for me, even right. though it felt incredibly painful. It was like, okay, you have an opportunity yeah. to do something. And I was like, well, shoot, I want to change everything. I just have no idea how. And it just so happened that I met this guy who told me, you know, if you eat a lot of bananas, you might feel better. And so I <laughs> got on like the internet and was researching, uh, you know, this diet is like eating more fruit, fruit-based diet. And I remember sitting in bed, like drinking beer and, and watching some <laughs> Durian Rider videos or like Dan the Man videos or other people that were, that were really um, talking about it a lot five years ago. And I got excited about it. And Eventually, I just decided I'm just going to do this thing, and I, I just stopped, I stopped everything in in about seven days, and was 100% raw, and it really, it really changed my life. It was like the tool I needed right in that moment to change all these other elements of my life. Yeah. Um, and the same thing with the Woodstock Fruit Festival. I probably found out about it three weeks, maybe four weeks into making right. the change. And I was like. I have to go, and it just so happened it was only two and a half hours from where I was living at the time, so yeah, it was a no-brainer, Yeah, and I met you at that same one. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, our little uh, story that I remember is that we kind of met on the first night, mm -hmm. so I felt, I felt really like, I, I felt quite lucky to have met you in the first night, because sometimes you meet someone like, the last night that you have a good, yeah. <laughs> you have conversation with, and you go, damn, I don't get to spend more time with first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, but I, you, as I said, so that's why Connor's probably the person that I've known almost the longest in this sort of <laughs> community. And uh, uh, you've always been an inspiration to me, and I always enjoy everything that you're doing and watch, uh, you know, keep an eye on everything. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I think you're a, for, I, I, this is for everyone, but I think Connor, an amazing human being, and Brittany as well. Um, so that's one of the reasons I'm really excited as well that you're coming out to the UK and that uh, other people can get the chance to meet you and learn from you and everything else. Um, you've both been really successful online with uh, YouTube, um, with building up channels and things like that. Is that something you enjoy, you know, reaching a kind of wide audience online and connecting people in that way? Mm. I love it. Definitely. Um, that's another so tool that I feel like has really helped uh, shape shape my life in, in a positive mm -hmm. way. And have the, the reflection of something like YouTube, um, getting the, the feedback from an audience, but also being able to just watch yourself yep. and hear your own story reflected back at you when you make a video. That's been totally life changing for me. Yeah, and I know like having the accountability like mm. wanting to show up as my best self and so creating a life where I can sustain that and where like I want to look good in my videos and like uh, I want to feel vibrant in my videos and I want brilliant. community around me. Like in the beginning for me it was so nice to have community when there wasn't community physically around me in my space mm, yeah. and now I feel like we're, we're physically surrounded by community and a lot of the people who reach out to us through YouTube tell us that like we're able to be part of that community for them right now while they're yeah. like establishing that more in their lives. Yeah, it's almost like with any kind of alternative lifestyle approach that community, actually finding other people that do it is one of the hardest things about doing it <laughs> and getting yeah. that extra support and inspiration from people. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. You've also obviously, you've done a lot of videos and things on minimalism and having a simplistic life and also traveling. Um, or no, nomadism, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how's, can you speak about kind of, how do you view that? What's your principles in regards to that? And how do you, how does that change the way you look at life? Oh, I love that topic. I think that I actually feel like I got into downsizing and like simplifying my <laughs> life before I found a fruit-based diet. They happen kind of simultaneously. Uh -huh which made sense because it was like as I was clearing out, it was like everything's being cleared out at once. Like your guts, your <laughs> crappy thoughts, like the junk around you that you really don't want. You just like want everything out that's not serving you because it feels mm -hmm. so good. And 
yeah, that's kind of like, it's always felt that way for me. Like when I felt overwhelmed when I was younger, I would clean up my space and notice how much more motivated I felt to start a new project when I had like space to create in. And I felt like it was such a powerful tool, just recognizing if you create space, then you can allow for the inspiration to come like mm -hmm. with how you want to fill that space or maybe even just that space. But it starts with creating the space. And I found like that was such a helpful tool that that's, I think that's why it took such a big role in my life and why I wanted to start sharing it through YouTube. Yeah, and I uh, similarly just found that having less allowed me to have more, you know, for myself, more energy to yeah. go to me and the things that I was actually excited about rather than kind of spreading it all out and then watering down my passions. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really know that minimalism was a thing until I had already been a minimalist unintentionally and had was like changing things about my life. It just seems like a very natural flow. Like you were saying, it connects with diet. It connects with health in general. I think we just tend to, to start being more conscious, living more consciously. And when we do that, I think we tend to, to notice, wow, I have a lot of stuff that I really don't need. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it seemed like a natural <laughs> progression and the traveling yeah. to go along with that. It was similar, you know, like yeah. uh, I think us humans have a natural, draw and pull to explore and have adventures and so to be able to create a lifestyle where that can be uh sustainable is something like feels really important to me i think to both of us yeah for sure i i feel like i was always drawn to travel and adventure from a really young age i knew i wanted to do it and the more i did it the more i realized how important that was to me how important the experiences and like specifically finding people and connecting with them, different ways of living, different uh, environments, and realizing like you don't need much to do that. Mm -hmm. And so as I was traveling, I would get rid of more and more stuff until I realized like, I want to have basically nothing with me. I just want to travel with like a simple backpack and not feel inhibited in any way. Wonderful, yeah. Um, something I think is probably another thing you have a connection with, uh, Connor, I know after a number of years of knowing you that you started to get into um, becoming a, ther become a therapist, uh, I, I, internal family systems, and um, I think both of you seem to have this um, kind of desire to kind of connect uh, deeply, authentically, communicate, these kind of things. It seems like you both have a a background in that or an interest in that can you maybe speak a bit about that and what impact that's had as well on you yeah for sure um for me you know as i as i changed my diet other things started changing in my right. life like getting rid of things was a big one and at, at some point just uh learning more about how to get closer to myself or like how to find more health what what other avenues can i utilize and this um this area of self therapy just came into my space some, right. somehow, you know, online. And I started understanding that we can do a lot with therapists and with community and with other people, but we can also do a lot on our own. And so I, I, I was learning how I could become my own therapist and do a self therapy journey. And through that process, I came across a modality called internal family systems that really resonated with me and used it for myself and felt like things were really shifting big time. And I wanted to continue to do that, not just with myself, but with other people and share it and teach other people how they can do the same thing, become their own therapist. And by using this modality, you can use any modality for it, but this one seems to work pretty well. And you can use it as like an initial thing and then, and then get going from there. So I got trained in the modality. I started doing therapy with people and um, man, the communication, the authentic relating, self-love with myself, learning about compassion. I've done so much. I've had the opportunity to do so much of that with other people in a therapeutic way. I feel very grateful for that. And it's also so built into my everyday life. Uh, it often doesn't feel like work. It just feels like this is, this is what I do. This is what, how I live. And I, and it's really important to me. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I feel like I was always really drawn to relationships. I noticed like in my life, I would drop my work. Like I was so excited, I created my own business and then I would like drop the things I had set up for me just so I could have like an in-depth conversation with somebody on Messenger and I kept realizing like, what's so important to me? And it's it was the connection, it was like, feeling connected to somebody else, feeling like I could mm. support and love them in their journey and also recognizing how that enhanced my life, like how much more I got out of out of um, reflections through connection, if that makes sense. And, and it was like sort of naturally happening. The more I was clearing out my body, the more I realized how much I wanted to work on myself internally. And as I was doing that, I felt like I had so much more to offer in my relationships. And I felt like I had more space to understand maybe patterns I had had in the past that were not creating the healthiest relationships in my life. And I felt like I, I had so much more light to share and so much more understanding. And it just felt so much more fun to grow with other people and to be able to share that with other people. And I just kind of felt like it kind of all came together at the same time. And, and then when I met you, feeling like we we're both really on the same page about how we wanted to connect with each other and how we wanted to connect with other people and that we wanted to do it like without rules and really authentically and we wanted to like create, I don't know, it almost feels like a movement of people who are following more of what feels right for them, just like we do with diet or anything else in our lives, but now with relationships. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you know, now you have a YouTube channel together as well as having separate channels, uh, yeah. a, web, a website together, and that's more, is that fair to say that's more to do with relationships and helping people improve their relationships and things like that? Yeah, totally. that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. Both with other people and, and the relationships with ourselves. All right, okay, okay. Excellent. Uh, well, looking forward to obviously having you come what other things are you doing this year what are your plans uh, in the next few months in the next year what else have you got in store well we're going to uh, a big acro festival i think is the first thing coming up we're going to learn some new tricks and uh, that's in san diego we'll be gone for a few days oh, and well. i think the next big one is is the uk fruit fest yeah totally all right nice following yes. that at woodstock so yeah yeah, the fruit festival is about 64 days away, if you want to put it in that okay. term. Okay, there it yeah. is. Um, yeah. And just to give a little plug for people, it's from the 2nd to the 6th of August this year. And um, if you're coming because you're a fan of Connor and Brittany, then you can get a substantial discount with the code CBUK. Mm -hmm. So you can use that code, get a whole lot off the price, and uh, then you get to come and hang out with everyone and have a great time and uh, it'll probably be as well hopefully be as life-changing for you as these events have been for us uh, yeah from the number of things we've done um yeah uh what are what are the what are your um, your dreams and visions for the future how how do you what's your i mean perhaps you're living your ideal life right now i don't know and but is there anything, <laughs> could it get any better? Is there anything else you're looking to achieve? <laughs> I'm pretty happy. I definitely feel like I'm living my ideal life and, and also love having goals and an, an envisioned kind of dream for the future. So yeah, we have some of those things going on. Yeah, I really feel like the biggest one for me is almost just melting into more of the fact that we are living our ideal life right now and being more present here for it because I feel like we have so much momentum going in all the areas we want to have it going in. I almost feel like uh, trying less and enjoying more has been helping so much lately, just being more present in my life. Yeah. Yeah, continuing on this path is like perfect for me um, with acro business, our relationship, our relationships outside of this relationship, our, our bigger community, um, everything feels feels right on. Yeah. Fantastic, brilliant. Well, looking forward to seeing you there. Um, you too, brother. And seeing you uh, at other events as well, because you're going to be at Woodstock Festival, which is in upstate Maybe. New York. I'm going to mm -hmm. be there. I'll be there as well. Um, and it, also, you've got Fruit Winter. And is that December or is that January? January. Okay. Yep, the 12th to the 20th. Um, cool, cool. 
Yeah. We're looking forward to all those. They cool. are. I really think they are all life changing. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so for anyone watching this video, if you want to find out more about Brittany and Connor, uh, I'll, from memory, Connor, your, your YouTube channel is Thriving Minimalist. Yeah. Uh, and you've got another, you've got another, you've got a few. I, I know you've had a few over the years. Uh, Brittany, yeah. yours, is, <laughs> Brittany is yours, yours is still called Simple Living, or is it? I think it's changed? under my name, just like Brittany, Brittany Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. So you can check those out, and I'll put some links below uh, for people that haven't heard of you. And also, um, Connor and Brittany is your other channel, is your yeah. combined yeah. channel for the relationship mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, fantastic. Um, no children should go and watch that channel, or does it work? No children? Is that what you said? Yes. Uh, is it, uh, I guess that's up to you and, and, uh, and age, age, age restricted content, some of it, or? None of it is technically uh, age restricted. Right, okay. uh, there may be some some types of content that you know you and your children may decide that no. um, maybe you want to wait on viewing, but sure, there's sure. nothing specific. There's, right, okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay, brilliant. Um, uh, that's that's. Uh, all, I don't know how to end these things, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's it and if anyone's got any questions for me about the festival leave some comments below share it with other people and and, and everything else thanks a lot guys thanks cool. for your time and thanks, thanks for, having, so much us. for having us Ronnie. yeah